Hello everyone. Today we will go for discussing some testing terminologies. So here in this class we will go for see the concept of bug, error, fault, failure, what is test case, what is test suit and what is test oracle. So a software bug is an error or it may be a flaw or a fault in a computer program or system that causes it to produce an incorrect or unexpected result or to behave in unintended ways. So a software bug occurs when at least one of these rules is true. The first one is the software does not do something that the specification says it should do. That means in our specification we have written something and if my system is not performing according to the specification then I will say bug is there. The software does something that the specification says it should not do. So during the preparation of our SRS already we have mentioned that what my system is not going to do. But unfortunately, if my software or my software does something which is not specified in the specification, then again bug is there in the software. The third rule is a software does something that the specification does not mention. It is not mentioned in the specification but some new thing is uh, done by the software. So then again we can say the software is having bug. The software does not something that the product specification does not mention but should. That means my system should behave in such a way but it is not mentioned in the specification and of course the software also not doing that thing but it should. So then also we can say the software is having bug and the last one is the software is difficult to understand, hard to use or it is slow. If this is happening then also we can say the software is having bug. So most bugs are not because of uh, only mistakes in the code. The estimation of the bugs uncovered at various phases such as at the specification of, uh, itself the 55% bugs uh, can be uncovered at the design 25% coding 15% and others 5%. So if you look at generally it's a misconception that only uh, during the coding phase uh, the errors or the bugs are there in the system but if you look at here 55 plus 25 so around 80% of bugs can be uh, uh, uncovered during the SRS preparation and the design of the system. Bugs can also be known as defect, error, anomaly, fault, variance, failure, problem inconsistency and product anomaly. So these are some of the synonyms of bugs. It may be a defect in the system, it may be an error in the system, it may be an anomaly, it may be a failure. So there are so many names given uh, but a, a generic term or a common name uh, for all these is bug. Now we will see how this uh, error, fault and failure they are different from each other. So error it refers to the difference between the actual output and the expected output. So an error is an incorrect implementation of a system. Errors may exist in any phase of the software engineering process. Error, mistake and defect are a synonymous or synonyms in software testing terminology. So according to IEEE the definition of error is human mistake which causes a fault is called an error. Fault. 
A fault is an incorrect or unexpected behavior of a system in response to a real world action. So faults results from errors in the system. So it is a condition that causes the software to fail to perform its required function. So the fault occurs in a system due to the error that is induced by the human being. So according to IEEE, the discrepancy in code that causes a failure is called fault. So the fault is the human mistake or due to error, the fault will be there. And due to the fault, in future, the system may fail. Failure. A failure occurs when a system is prevented from achieving its mission. So failures result from faults. So it is the inability of a system or component to perform required function according to specification. According to IEEE, the external behavior of the system is incorrect. So this is called failure. So if you look at here, uh, the relation between error, fault and failure. So diagrammatically you can show in this way, a person makes an error. So this is a human mistake, which creates the fault in the software. And that can cause a failure in operation. So the error is related to human being due to which the fault in the system will be there and due to fault the system is going to fail in its operation or whatever the mission of the software is there we are not going to achieve that mission so error is a terminology that is generally used by the developer and bug is the terminology that is being used by the tester. So these are the two terms that are generally used by the developer and the tester. So error is the terminology of the developer and bug is the terminology of the tester. Now we'll see the concept of test case. What a test case is, how the test case is written and what is the use of a test case. So a test case consists of inputs given to the program and its expected outputs. So that means while you are going to test a product, you have to give certain inputs to the system. So what will be the inputs? And according to those inputs, what will be the expected output from the system that you are going to represent uh, in a particular way? And uh, that document is called basically a test case. So inputs may also contain some preconditions and the actual inputs. The expected output may contain some post conditions also, if any, and the outputs which may come as a result when selected inputs are given to the software as input. So every test case will have a unique identification number by which you are going to, you are going to uniquely identify a particular test case. So here you will see a sample test case format. So here uh, I am going to put a test case identification uh, number like here, like test case 1, test case 2, test case 3 like this. And uh, the test case is having two parts like part 1, this is the before execution part and part 2 is the after execution part. So in the part 1 or the before execution, you may go for writing the purpose of the test case, the preconditions, if any, this is optional, and inputs, this is compulsory, and what will be the expected outputs, what will be the preconditions written by, so who has written the test case, the name of the fellow will be there, and the date of design of the test case. So these are the things that constitutes the part one of the test case. And in the part 2, once the test case is being executed, then what is the actual output that you are getting? That you have to write here. So in the output section, this is the uh, actual output. So you see the before execution here, the, uh, the output is the expected output. But 
after execution once the test case is run over a particular program then what exactly the result you are getting that is the actual output you are getting if there is any post conditions that also you can put here pass or fail so here if the actual output matches with the actual output then the test case is a pass one otherwise you have to write fail here if there is any kind of mismatch if fails any possible reason of failure which is optional that also you can put here suggestions that is also optional run by the person who has run the test case the name will come and and the date of the suggestion that you are going to put here right or the date on which uh, that uh, this test case has been run that you are going to put here so this is a sample format this format is not fixed different different organizations they write their own piece of uh, test case so you can write your own test cases also you can use any uh, of the format next we'll see uh, what is a test suit the set of test cases is called a test suit so this is the way you go on writing uh, suppose 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or uh, different uh, test cases so when they are going to combine together then that is called a test suit so we may have a test suit of all test cases test suit of all successful test cases and test suit of all unsuccessful test cases so you can go on partitioning them so what are the successful test cases those who are pass so that you can put somewhere so that is called a successful uh, test suit and uh, you are going to put all the unsuccessful test cases and that is going to call the unsuccessful test suit so all test suits should be preserved as we preserve source code and other documents so they are equally valuable and useful for the purpose of maintenance of the software right so once you are going to run the test cases whatever the result that is coming whether the test case is a pass one or whether the test case is a failed one so you have to uh, put somewhere uh, carefully because when you go for the regression testing or when you go for the maintenance of the product so during that time these documents play a very important role uh, for the purpose of retesting and maintenance activity now we'll see what is a test oracle so an oracle is a mechanism for determining whether the program has passed or failed a test so a complete oracle would have three capabilities one is a generator to provide predicted or expected results for each test a comparator to compare the predicted and obtained results or the actual results and an evaluator to determine whether the comparison results are sufficiently close to be uh, a pass or to be a fail so this mechanism whether a particular program has passed or failed a particular test that is called a test oracle so this is for today's class thank you